Welcome to a CO2 coffee with ICOS. My name is Werner Kutsch, and we thought that we have uh, this kind of virtual cafe to overcome the social distancing in these times of Corona confinement. And we would like to discuss in this cafe from now on every Friday about topics related to greenhouse gases and to climate change. And I want to welcome two guests from the Netherlands today. The first one is Eric Christiansen. He is uh, active at Fridays for Future for in, in Utrecht in the Netherlands. Uh, so welcome, Eric. Thank you. And the second one is Professor Han Dolman from the Freie University in Amsterdam. And he is a... a well-established climate scientist and specialist in greenhouse gases. So welcome, Han. Thank you. I think uh, it is important that we, that we know a little bit about the, the people we are discussing with. So um, Eric, you are since more than a year now activist in the, in the Fridays for Future movement in the Netherlands. Can you tell us how you somehow um, Got to this? Last year in February, uh, there was a big climate like strike in the Netherlands. A, a friend of mine, I, I basically went there with a friend who was more involved back then. I wasn't really um, like doing climate activism. I was like I knew it was a, a thing, but I wasn't really involved. Mm -hmm. um, but so I went there and then afterwards I spoke to one of the organizers um, and then basically, yeah, it's very open so anyone can join. So I just spoke to them and they like put me in a group chat and then I went to one of the meetings and then it went from there. I did Fridays for Future, but uh, besides that, my hobbies are reading and sailing. What, what's fascinating for me in sailing is that you uh, are moved by the wind. You are moving without any, any uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So that's quite fascinating. And that was the reason why, why uh, Greta Thunberg took this sailing trip to the, to, to the US and uh, she wanted to go later to the COP in, in Chile. Um, did you follow this? Um, yeah, I, I was very interested in, in the trip. And I, I was quite jealous because I would have loved to sail across the Atlantic myself. But then the, the, the COP was, was uh, moved from Chile to Madrid and I heard you have been there. Yeah, I, uh, I went by train, of course. Sadly, no, no sailing there. And what did you do there? Um, so there, was, there were quite a few uh, young people from Fridays for Future there. And we basically... Um, were there to show that the youth uh, also um, should be heard because in the official UN uh, decision-making process, the negotiations, youth are not included, at least not enough. And so we wanted to make sure that everyone knew how important this issue is, especially for young people. Are you perhaps thinking to become a scientist one day? Um, yeah, I think it's really interesting, and yeah, perhaps I, uh, I'm, I'm still looking, looking into what I want to do later. But it's definitely one of the options. Sounds cool. Perhaps you can then uh, study with Han. Um, Han, when you were 15, did you plan to become a scientist already? I don't think so. I don't think I knew much about my future career when I was 15. Okay, but what made you finally become a climate and greenhouse gas scientist? Um, in a way, I, I wanted to do, um, my first degree was in biology and I wanted to do something that was useful. I was at that time when I was, I think probably 17 or something, I read, uh, the Silence of the Spring, Silent Spring, sorry, from Rachel Carson, which was about uh, DDT uh, 
getting into our environment and getting into places where it wasn't being used. So that was the first part of the environmental crisis. And to some extent, I thought I could do something about that by studying biology. And then sort of further down, I rolled into climate science. We have a topic today that was uh, selected by, by um, Eric. And the topic is, of course, how the, the CO2 concentration in the, in the atmosphere is developing in general and what's now happening during this uh, confinement uh, of the corona crisis. Eric, do you want to precise your question? Yeah, so Han, I was wondering, are the national lockdowns visible in the greenhouse gas data? Uh, very interesting question. I think we have to uh, answer this question a little bit more in general. So, so Han. I, I think, unfortunately, it will be very hard to detect uh, that into the atmosphere, in the concentration of the atmosphere. Two reasons. Uh, for that one is that the the atmosphere mixes very fast so any reduction that we would have for instance is very quickly balanced with all sorts of other carbon in the atmosphere globally so that makes it very hard to to detect it and the second thing is that it's a very still a very small amount of carbon that is being uh, reduced uh, we have a, a, you can see on the graphs here in the background that we have a very long steady increase uh, in uh, carbon dioxide concentrations. And there are a few periods in history when things have dropped down. And that's due to the fact that we use less fossil fuel emissions. That's what we currently do. Uh, but unfortunately, in the total emissions, that's only a small drop. So it's like 8% or something like that. And that means that you can't detect it in the atmosphere. You just don't see it because there's so much carbon already around. So you can, you can make a nice comparison, um, which was based on a, a, a paper that is on the ICOS website, where they, they imagine a, a swimming pool of 25 by 25 meters and roughly two and a half meters deep. And if you, compare all the water that's in there with the CO2, it means that what humans have contributed to that is roughly 70 or 80 centimeters of that two and a half meter depth. And what we're looking currently for is closer to something the, the width of a hair. So something that is uh, one th a few thousandths of a millimeter. And of course, that's something that in a swimming pool with waves caused by the wind uh, is going to be very hard to detect. But we have on the on the left side uh, we have the um, the the blue line going on, which would be uh, a projection to 2010 uh, 2020 without the without the confinement, and the red line is the um, the expected with the confinement, the expected increase in the swimming pool, in our atmospheric swimming pool, and it's, uh, uh, I can't see the difference. I can't really see the difference. So this reduction of perhaps eight or, or maximum 10% is not changing anything in the atmospheric concentration. So Eric, does this answer your question? Um, yeah, thanks so much, Han. So, and your next question was about uh, now the influence of the CO2 concentration. Um, yeah, so to what extent could this temporary drop in CO2 emissions have a long-term effect on the global climate? I'm, I'm afraid, uh, Eric, I have to be, uh, to, to give you a negative answer again. I don't think it's uh, very likely that we'll see this in the, uh, the temperature increase. Um, globally. Uh, one of the reasons for that is if you look at the graph, you see a very gradual increase in the carbon dioxide concentration over the last 60 years. Um, and you see also, particularly in the last 30 to 40 years, 
a very strong increase in the temperature. And that temperature has a, a large natural variability. So given the fact that the atmospheric concentration is very marginally changing, as I just explained to you in, in the previous uh, question, um, the concentration of CO2 continues to increase and so we'll expect an increase in temperature uh, regardless of the, the current uh, confinement period. Yeah, thanks so much. That's clear. Um, yeah, of course, it's too bad that it won't have an impact. Um, my next question uh, was uh, related to this. Do you think that uh, when we're recovering from this crisis, uh, that we can uh, ensure like that it will be a green recovery, or is it more likely that we will go back to the go back to normal? Um, I think you have to make a make a distinction between um, what we hope that would happen and what might happen in reality. I would certainly hope that. Um, the recovery will be green and one of, one of the reasons for that is that um, we would need the type of reduction that we currently have uh, to continue for a number of years if we really want to achieve the, the goal of the Paris agreements, the, the Paris climate agreements of staying below one and a half degree. So that's something that you see in the, in the graph on, on the top of uh, as well. And that means that each year we would have to have a reduction in our emissions of fossil fuel uh, that is comparable to what we currently have with the confinement. And that also shows that it's going to be very hard. And that's probably where you with the Fridays for Future uh, also can play a big role in keeping the attention focused on, uh, on how we need to achieve those reductions. I would like to come back to the COP when you were at the COP, Eric. So imagine that you could, uh, uh, they would have let you into the big plenum and you could have uh, one minute talk to the, to the, all the presidents and prime ministers and chancellors and, and political leaders. What would you have said in this one minute? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I think I would have told them how big this issue is and how it impacts uh, basically everyone on, on the whole world and how um, they have the power to work together and, and get this done and that basically everyone is relying on them to do this. I think we are now coming to the end of our little cafe. I still have a little zip in my cup. And, um, I would like to thank you very much for being with us for this for this uh, uh, CO2 coffee. Oh, I have one final thing, uh, Eric. We we have uh, in ICOS a science conference every uh, two years, and the next one is planned for September in Utrecht. So, do you want to join us? I would like to invite you, and then you can hang around a bit more with scientists. I I think that would be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope we will not have a second wave with the coronavirus and uh, then we have to uh, stay digital and virtual with this conference, but then it's postponed to the next year and then we would definitely meet. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm, I hope it was a little bit informative for everybody to have this cafe chat. <laughs>